Hello everyone, I'm Thomas and welcome to my web development cloud and IoT education channel. Today I'm going to show you the simplest method to get started with the new ESP32 S2 microcontroller using Saola One development board, Visual Studio Code and platform IO. And by the way, I would like to thank you for all the positive feedback I received on my previous ESP32 video, especially for the first comment that was an inspiration for this video. And now Let's get started. First of all, just quickly, let me go through this to-do list. So it starts from me pointing out the main differences between ESP32 S2 and ESP32. Then I'm gonna talk about the development board that I'm using, that is Saola One, the way we're going to deploy the code from the computer to the microcontroller and required USB to UART driver. After that, I'm going to create and configure a project with Visual Studio Code and Platform IO. The project is going to be Arduino framework based. And finally, I'm going to show you how to blink LED diode that is built in on Saola One board and how to change the colors of the light. And that's going to be it. As today, I'm just going to focus on the basics. Right. OK, so let's move to the differences. And on the differences, we have one processor core instead of two lower power consumption that is between 20 and 30 percent on a wi-fi transmission we don't have bluetooth ethernet and can bus but we get lcd and camera interfaces instead we also have usb 1.1 otg which is quite interesting a feature by the way otg means on the go and what this allows us is to either connect an external usb device to ESP32 S2, uh, like a mouse, keyboard, flash drive, or, or web camera. But also instead, we can turn ESP32 S2 into an actual USB device that when connected to the computer can be discovered as something that we actually have a control over. So essentially with this feature, we can turn ESP32 S2 based device into a smart mouse, keyboard, joystick, gamepad, again, web camera, flash drive, and many, many other options. If you are interested in the details about this feature, have a look at the description of the video. I left a link there. Right, and finally, the last item on the list, that is Wi-Fi connection can stay active while in a light sleep mode. In my opinion, this might be a game changer in terms of power management. However, there is one thing I would like to note, which is the fact that you cannot really transmit any data when the device is in a light sleep mode. So you can only keep the connection alive and where you save the power is on the fact that you don't have to reconnect to Wi-Fi when the device exits light sleep mode. So yeah, something that I'm definitely gonna investigate further and make a video about, as well as USB OTG, and by the way, if you don't want to miss these videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you'll be first to get notified when these videos come out. Okay, and now let's move to the development board that I'm using, and that is ESP32 S2 Saola One. And here I'm just going to talk about how we're going to deploy the code, because that's going to happen in a sort of old way, like it happens with ESP32 and that's over the micro USB port that is connected to USB to UART bridge. And for this one, to make it work with Visual Studio Code and Platform IO, you need to install an external driver. The name of the driver is CP210X USB to UART bridge driver. You can find the link to the website with the driver in the description of the video, but also I covered the installation of this driver in my previous video so you can check this out as well. You can also find the link in the description. And the last thing to point out here is the USB OTG interface that is on pin 90 and 20 and it's separate to this micro USB port. So if you want to make use of that feature, you can either connect a USB cable straight away on the D- minus and D+, plus, or you can use the USB breakout board and also connect it to these pins. Okay, and I think this is it in terms of the overview. Let's move to the Visual Studio Code to create a new project. 
So here is my Visual Studio Code already opened with a Platform I.O. extension installed in my Visual Studio Code. And by the way, if you haven't got this yet on your machine, check my previous video about ESP32. I covered this installation step by step there. You can find the link in the description again, right? And now what I'm going to do here is to click on this icon and then in a the menu here, open. I can actually click on the platform IO icon again to close it. And here in this tab, I'm going to click on a new project. For the project name, I'm going to pick something like ESP32S2, maybe LED blink. And then for the board, normally, what we would do is to try to find the Saola 1 board, right? However, at the moment, as for December 2021, you cannot really choose different framework than Espress if IoT development framework. So I cannot really pick Arduino framework here. Um, there is a workaround I'm going to show you. However, one thing to say is by the time you're watching this video, you might actually be able to pick Arduino framework here. And then you just want to do that. You just want to select Arduino framework and click on finish and you can skip the workaround part uh, of the video that I'm actually going to present now. Okay, and now to work around. So for the workaround, we need to choose a different board. What we are interested in is ESP32, and there should be a dev module, Espressif ESP32 dev module. And for this one, we can pick Arduino. I'm going to click on finish now. and the new project is created. Now, this is very important. We need to open platformio.ini, the platformio configuration file. And here I'm going to paste in a following configuration and I'm going to remove this one, right? So that's the configuration for the Saola one board using Arduino framework. It uses a feature branch on platform IO that supports basically Arduino framework for that board. One important thing, there is additional option here, a monitor speed. This is going to be useful for the serial monitor that I'm just going to initialize by going to src main.cpp file, right? So like a standard Arduino. And in here in the setup, I'm going to type in serial begin. I'm going to copy and paste this value, right? So once I've done this, I'm just going to simply send some uh, send a message uh, over the serial, right? So we'll be able to test if we can deploy the code to the board and if we can see a text in the serial monitor. So basically, um, if this configuration works well with Saola one that I've got. So yeah, so let's maybe do something again like hello from a setup. Something like I've done with my previous in my previous video. And serial print ln hello from loop. And we're gonna do a delay here, right? So once that is once this message is sent, there's going to be a, a sleep, right? The, the, the board's going to sleep for one second and then going to continue, right? So yeah, so that's ready. Uh, maybe before I deploy, I remind you how these two functions work with the Arduino framework. So setup is executed only once. So we should see this information in a serial monitor only once. And then the loop is going to uh, just, you know, keep printing out this message and uh, wait for one second and do it again and again right in the loop as this is executed continuously. Right, okay, so now I want to make sure my device is connected to my computer using USB cable. It is connected, okay. So now I'm going to compile the code. So what we want to do is to click on the check mark button. Also, before you deploy the code, make sure you have the CP2102X USB2UART driver installed, 
right? Because with, without the driver, it's not really possible to send any code over this uh, micro USB uh, port on the Saola board. Right, and now the code is compiled, so I can uh, click on this uh, arrow button, right, which, which is upload, platform IO upload. And that should automatically detect the board and upload the code. Right, okay, that was quick. So now we want to connect to the serial monitor. So this button over here, a serial monitor, I'm going to click on it. And once you click, normally you should be connected to the serial monitor automatically. But sometimes on some machines, you may see something like I've got over here. And uh, I need to pick an option, right? So essentially anything that has this CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller, right? So in my case, it's option three or five. So either of those I go for, the serial monitor is just going to work. So I'm going to go for three. And now I see hello from loop. If I press the reset button on my Saola board, we can see now hello from setup, right? So this is where it started. The setup function has been executed once. And now we see hello from loop. Okay, right, so now I'm gonna exit this. So let me just uh, press here. And maybe I just close the terminal as well. And now having everything working right, we can deploy the code, execute it. I can show you how to blink uh, the LED diode and how to change colors. For this one, we actually need to install an external library first because it's a different type of diode. It's not as simple uh, a diode that we have on ESP32 and we can just use digital write. Um, on this one, we need a, a specific library. Let me show you. So what we're going to do is to go to platform IO menu again, then open from the quick access menu. Then we want to go to libraries. And then in here, in the search libraries text box, we want to type WS28 one, a two, and then press enter, right? Bunch of results show up. Uh, maybe I close this platform IO menu, right? And we can see a few libraries here. The one we interested in is this one, WS2812FX. Um, basically you could go for any of these libraries to light up this diode. I did a small research myself and I find this one quite simple to, to use. So I'm going to go for this one. So I'm going to click on it. And here, let me just scroll up. And here I'm going to click on add to project. And then select project. And my project ESP32 S2 LED blink. I'm going to click on add button. And that's been added to my uh, project. Okay, how to use this library. Uh, for that, I'm going to go to the GitHub page. So I'm going to click here on this link. And that should open browser with the GitHub page. And here is a, a piece of code we are interested in. So I'm actually going to copy this and paste into main.cpp. Right, so let's just paste it here. And now we're going to match this code with, with what I've got, right? So I'm going to uh, move these two lines to the beginning of the setup. And I'm going to move uh, these to the loop, right? Okay. Nice. Okay, but that's not everything. There is some extra uh, steps we have to do uh, to make it work. So first of all, what we are interested in is um, the LED pin, right? Because LED pin is not 12. We need to actually find the pin that this uh, LED diode is connected to on Saola board. And that pin is GPIO18 according to specification. So what we could do to find the number that is assigned to this pin is to include gpio.h file and then for the led pin i can use a constant gpio num underscore 18 right so that's gonna set 
LEDP into GPIO num18. Right, that's the one. Actually, this this is 18, so we could we could be fine with just 18. But yeah, that's fine. Okay, LED count. We have just one diode, so there's gonna be one. And then um, what we want to look at is the mode of this WS2812FX. We want to change this to FX mode, uh, maybe blink rainbow, right? Not just blink, but also rainbow. So it's gonna be blinking and slowly changing the color. For setting the speed, we have 200 milliseconds. Um, let's maybe make it um, 2000 milliseconds. So we should have the diode blinking every two seconds um, and we can keep the brightness for 100. And yeah, that should be uh, fine. It works a little bit different to digital write and, uh, and pin mode with the standard diodes. As you can see here, we have a service method that needs to be called uh, on every single uh, loop call in Arduino framework and then start actually initializes it, right? So that's a, a little bit different, right? You set the mode of the of the diode here in the setup. You, you, you make all the decisions, right? On the brightness, on the speed, and then uh, you just use the service method in the loop. So, so it works a little bit different, yeah. But yeah, let's, let's test it out. Let's see how it looks like. So now I'm just going to press on the arrow button here. Straight away, it should send the code, like compile and send the code to the microcontroller. Okay, that's it, finished. And we have a success because we can see the diode is blinking and it's slowly changing the color, right? It was red and now it's going towards orange. It's yellowish now. And let me just speed it up. And we can see it's changing colors, right? So it all works well. I can now connect to the serial monitor as well here to see if we get the messages. So let me go for, uh, let's go to three. Let's, let's, let's go with three, right? And then we get hello from loop, right? We can see the diode is blinking. Okay, cool. So now I encourage you to experiment with this library. You can set a different mode, speed and brightness and see what happens. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be it in terms of the features I covered today. As I said at the beginning, um, I, I was focusing on the basics, right? So to getting this to work. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you find my content useful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If there is a subject you would like me to cover in the next video, let me know in the comments. Cheers, bye.